Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Here we are at Mitchell's in Alaska. Today we're milling logs, getting more ready for the cabin. We've, um, we used up all the ones we had milled the other day, so we started in again this morning, working out of our log pile. And uh, this is what we've got so far today. So we thought we would set up, walk you through milling one or two logs so you can see what it's like to uh, get a log ready to go in the cabin. Well, this is after we've been to the woods, cut them, drug them out of the woods, and hauled them home. So now we're getting ready to work them off our pile, back onto the mill, back from the trailer, and then back to the cabin and start hanging them up on the wall. So currently the walls are about right at six feet high. So we still have at least two more feet to go. So the logs that you've seen on the trailer and the logs you see behind Tyler still won't be enough to get us uh, finished up, but it's gonna make a good start. So I guess let's hook one up and put her on the mill. Get the old Hercules tractor fired up. See if Tyler hits the mark whenever he hooks the tongs on and see if it balances well. That one pretty good. Looks like it balanced pretty well. He's got to spin it around on there. Hey, hey, get it turned around there. We got to put the small end on the head of the mill. Don't know if that's the way you have to do it, but that's the way we found it works best for us anyway. If you wonder why the mill's sitting here where it's at, it's because whenever we set it up here, we had five feet of snow on the ground, and this happened to be a spot we could clear out. That's why it's sitting cockeyed by the trailers, because that's what we had to work with. Right there by that tree on the other side of the tractor, from there all the way down past the outhouse to the road, that was actually about a 10-foot snow bank that was as high as a tractor would pile it. So. That's why it's where it's at. We'll eventually be moved. We'll eventually have a roof over it and all that. But right now, building houses is still the most important thing. So, What Tyler was doing there was cutting the end of the stump off where the where we had fell the tree and it has a big angle on the end of it so we'll go ahead and get rid of that and if you're wondering if we have bigger chainsaws than that yes we do that's just a handy size to have working around the mill here the big ones you just don't need one out here that big um, we do use bigger ones when we're cutting trees down and all that but these little bitty ones are sure nice to uh, have to work around the mill and whenever we're down around the cabin working. And, uh, so what Tyler's doing there is he's uh, laying that log out on there. Normally I'll be up there helping him, but now I'm just kind of slacking. But uh, <laughs> what he's doing there is rolling it around to see if it's actually setting on all the bunks sure that you see down through there. Has the log on it. So basically if the log is has a bend in it, we want to roll it around and try to get as flat a side as we can to uh, start our cut with. So that's what he's doing there. Then you see him working over the backside there. He's tightening up the, uh, the hold downs to uh, hold it in place while we're 
milling and uh, I mean, what he's doing down here on the end right now is he's uh, he's laying some marks on there so he knows how much he needs to take off of it to actually make a D-log out of it. So again, That'll we're... give us a you know, one inch one by there. Not quite one there, but then that'll give us our D-log roughly, you know, in that shape. So we'll, we'll wind up with a D-log out of this one and, and uh, maybe a, a one by six as well. So you can see the boards that we've gathered here this morning, um, which those there we'll put back in the mill and, and uh, cut the bark off those and square those up. So, and of course you can see the leftovers here, um, slabs that are on the trailer there. We're gonna give them to the neighbor. And then over there you see a pile of uh, ugly boards, which actually make good boards for woodsheds and stuff like that. So, um, so that's what those are for. So there's always a lot of leftovers. All right, I'm gonna put you on the stand here for a minute so I can get up here and do my part. My part's pushing this thing up and down the rails. That's what I like. Get you set down here, or hopefully you'll be able to see what we're doing. It'll be a little bit noisy while we're doing that, but. All right, here we go. First cut, got the slab off of it. So now Tyler giving the signal to come down one inch. So this will be our one by board that you see come off. board off there that was going over to the uh, pile to uh, give to the neighbors and also works good for uh, sheds and things like that. Tyler's rolling the log over now on the flat side. We'll come back and we'll we'll cut this side here just like we did the other side. Just verifying his marks here make sure his measurements are good.
All right, so now we got that side off there. Now, you have to decide which side you want to show on the cabin, which the, the side that has the bark on it, which will later be peeled anyway. But uh, So you want to put the straightest edge you can to make the outside of the log, and then the other side will uh, come back and we'll cut that side off and it'll be flat. And we'll probably be able to mill another board off of here. It'll be a one by six uh, if we have room to get one off there. And it looks like we probably have room to get at least one off there. Jump back up here and we'll recut that. So you can see we cut most of the bark off of that side. Now we're going to go down through there and cut a board off of it. Alright, so that board there still has quite a bit of rounded edge on it, so he's taking that over to the, uh, like the woodshed pile. So the next one here looks like it'll make a pretty clean board. Finish that one up now. I saved a, um, about a 12 foot 
one by six off of that. It probably cost you 15 bucks if you went to the lumber store to buy it. And what we're left here is a, a D log that is 11.5. 11 11.5 11 long. These here typically sell out here um, for 180 to 200 bucks for a 12 foot six inch D log. So milling it yourself saves a lot of money. I'm glad they carried up on the trailer. That makes it easy for me. So there we go. That's a all right. There's a finished D log. You can see that's how what this side looks like now. Once we get up to where the cabin goes, then it'll go on the saw horses and get the, all the bark gets peeled off of it before we actually install it onto the cabin. So. Still a lot of work to do um, before they actually become usable, but but it's still been a pretty fun experience building a log cabin. This is here. This is a little bit more of a beast right here. This is quite a bit longer than the other one was. So I think we're actually going to have to cut some off of it to actually make it fit in the mill. We can only do a, a 16 foot, eight inch log uh, without buying more extension for our mill, but um, we just didn't really see the need to buy any more bed extension than what we got because if you have logs that long, we really don't have a good way of handling them anyway. So we don't have a way of hauling them and they're too heavy to lift manually. So, and little tractor only lifts so much weight if it's a full log longer than our 16 foot then we're going to be into something that our little tractor don't want to lift so and Tyler's going to make a couple of chainsaw cuts on this one again chainsaw is bigger than that for doing bigger work but for this particular task the little bitty ones sure are nice yeah. now after making a couple of cuts on it you got to rehook it to uh, okay. level it back up again Kind of worked it out where we all have a job to do and everybody knows what the next guy's doing. the mill head it some more. Yeah. 
should have done that whenever I uh, finished up on the last log and I forgot to do it. set the tripod up we'll get a shot from a little bit different angle this time what we'll go through and mill this one up I keep our outhouse right in the video shot all the time it looks like that's an old one that was here when we moved here we built two new ones since then we still have another one to build yet so Here we go, we'll watch it from this angle this time. Are we ready? We're ready.
So you can see we got a pretty long board off of that one. We still have to uh, clean the edges of it. After the logs are done, and we go back and put the one buys on there, and uh, they actually stack in there on their side, and then we uh, clean up the sides of those and actually make clean boards out of them. We're getting ready to roll this one over now to the other side, flatten the other side of it, then we'll stand it up and make the uh, final cuts to the log. See them raise the bunks up, with the arms up there to uh, roll the log against, it makes it a bit easier to roll them. But you got to remember to put them back down. But, um, everybody's done a time or two, and that's uh, run into one of them with your saw. And it sure, uh, sure wreaks havoc on the saw blades. The saw blades are about 25 bucks a piece, so you ain't doing that. Now, we determined which side he wanted to save and which side we're going to cut off, so now we're getting ready to um, clean this side off. And this one here will probably make, probably make a couple of one buys as well. You see some of them we carried over there to the uh, other pile. Um, a lot of those are ugly boards, so we're not going to use them on the house, but they will make good boards for uh, you know, an old shed or something like that. That's how we're people... You know, aren't really going to be able to see in it because they are full one inch thick boards so they're a good strong board so i'm going to jump up here and make this other cut and what you see him doing there with that square is he has to make sure that that the uh, faces of the logs are square or they don't stack good um, they're hard to stack anyway and keep them running straight but if they're not square they're really difficult
All right. So there was a second D log completed. So you can again, we're looking at it from the end here. You can you can see why they call them a D log because it's shaped like the D. The rounded part, of course, will go on the outside. One flat part will go to the inside wall. Blades. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to change the blades big time. Blades getting dull. Looks like it's doing a little bit of diving on us, so I'm gonna put on a new blade. But anyway, that kind of shows you what we got. Our mill here's a Woodland HM122, so which means we can do 22 inch wide logs, which is pretty big diameter, and um, nine and a half horse motor on it here. So that pretty much concludes what we got for that. The next thing we'll do is we'll show another video when we start stacking logs on the cabin. So everybody wave bye.